Okay, welcome back to the political science class. First session today. Uh, you know that in yesterday's session, we discussed about uh, various aspects related with the importance of peace. Different uh, uh, political theorists or philosophers, they give different ideas or comments related with the term peace. And we know that not only the situation where the absence of war is considering as peace, number of other things also want to be stabilized in the society to attain peace. Clear? So we know that there are a number of problems are there we are regularly facing in the society. Basically, all those troubles are able to create problems or violence in the society. In the society, what are they? Basically, we can tell it is structural things or structural violences. In the society, it is, is there, the things are there. Okay, if any single spark, a small spark is enough to lead or enough to create a violence in the society. So first and foremost important or importance that a government wanted to uh, give uh, to eliminate such kind of problems from the society. What are they? What are those problems? Huh? Communalism, right? Racism, right? Casteism, right? Then class struggles, gender discrimination, all these things might, chances are there, it will lead to a violence in the society. Okay, so first of all, we want to eliminate such kind of things uh, to create a peaceful society, peaceful uh, society. At the same time, we studied about uh, even colonialism. Okay, the powerful countries are trying to dominate our uh, less powerful countries. That kind of activities also will create uh, a trouble, a tension, a violence. Clear. But today, we are unable to find uh, uh, colonialism in a broad sense here, or some more. Most of these countries or uh, today's countries are uh, independent, independent. But some countries in the Middle East, like the Israel-Palestine problem, is an example for colonialism that leading tensions always in that particular region. Okay, the problem between the Jews and Muslims. But nowadays, uh, they are trying to solve that issue. Number of Muslim countries are today cooperating with the country called uh, Israel. Israel. It's a specific uh, research uh topic what is that uh, the west asian issue or the west asian studies a branch of history branch of a uh, history west asian studies clear or not uh, there we are able to study about the problem between these uh, major religions like the jewish uh, jewish people the islam and the christians and the christians okay so all these uh, religions uh, the holy place is basically termed as jerusalem jerusalem Okay, so they are fighting to occupy that region and control it and uh, control it. Several years it was under the control of the Muslims. After that, it went under the control of the Jews, again Christians, uh, like that. These three religions are fighting for that. So this kind of uh, a colonial approach always will lead to a problem. What is that? Uh, tension, violence, okay, war in that region. That also a problem want to eliminate colonialism, want to eliminate uh, colonialism okay i already told you that uh, the time of the first world war and second world war uh, we people faced lots of problem related with the war okay or these wars great wars okay then we came to know that the importance of peace that's what we are giving too important for that word peace today okay peace we want peace okay so violence is or violence against violence is uh, not at all appreciable. Okay, it is not a recommendable. We cannot recommend that. Clear? So pacifiers. Okay, basically they are giving importance for uh, peace, truth, non-violence against violence against uh, violence. Even Gandhi taught us want to use the same method, and he proved uh, that with the help of uh, a particular movement called the civil disobedience movement. Civil disobedience movement, and he made a change. Uh, once he called us Majburi Khanam, Mahatma Gandhi, he changed that his ideology into Masbuti Khanam, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, clear or not? Helplessness to strength and power, strength and power. That's what uh, the importance of non violence here by Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, next one we discussed about the peace and the state. Peace and uh, states. Okay, peace and state. The 
okay most of the countries today we know that uh, uh, conflicts are there between the countries number of conflicts uh, we are able to find clear but today almost all the countries are basically termed as uh, sovereign governments or sovereign countries they are they have their own government their own uh, government and will not allow any other government to interfere in the daily administrative affairs of that particular country will not do that okay and they are always trying to protect its citizens within the territory within the territory always using military and police to suppress the problems within the country or violences within the country right clear or not okay sometimes the government is using this military and police uh, against the people in a violent way it will lead to number of other issues in society so the constitution of different countries are giving some peculiar powers to the government at the same time um, peculiar uh, uh, rights to the people also right to the people also where there is no power to the government to trespass these rights of the people okay clear or not so peace is establishing okay we can establish peace in such kind of countries okay next one we are going to 9.5 here different approaches to the pursuit of peace okay we want to establish peace so different approaches are there to establish or to the idea of peace so we know that in political science uh different individuals are coming from uh, different socio political and economical uh, backgrounds okay so different comments are there different ideas are there different attitudes are there comments also comments also we cannot say that uh, one person and his comment is 100% is correct clear so if i say that okay i would like to say mahatma gandhi is the person he taught the indians to uh, use the idea of uh, non violence non violence i was i am sa satyagraha right or not right or not how many of you will support these ideas of satyagraha non violence how many of you are support are the supporters of these ideas basically termed as the non violence and satyagraha just you know opposing that idea anybody is that those opposing that idea will be right or not so i am not asking for you uh, individual question here okay not asking an individual question sir but we are asking to yourself uh, you will you can create um, uh, that answer in your mindset right so some people are there they will say that uh, if you are respecting mahatma gandhi it is important to respect subhash chandra bose right or not both their ideas are different yes or no yes or no huh extremely different it is extremely different subhash chandra bose used uh, the radical method towards uh, uh, achieving independence achieving a uh, independence most radical one in india clear or not okay if he was alive uh, there's a competition will be there okay to become the father of the nation <laughs> understand okay mahatma gandhi and uh, subhash chandra bose a competition will be okay and it should be that's what political science right or not uh, plus will be there minus will be there okay two different approaches will be there it's called to be dialectical materialism what is that dialectical materialism okay understand this idea what is that dialectical materialism nothing but okay if dark is there i mean the night is there it is necessary and compulsory there should be clear clear okay whatever we are learning whatever we are discussing an opposite said is uh, compulsory necessary and it is existing clear for a simple saying so for your understanding god is there means devil is there that's it <laughs> understanding or not you people, people will say that right if you believe in god you want to believe in devil also you want to believe in ghost also that's it simple theory that's what uh, dialectical materialism dialectical materialism okay men women right or not like that so opposite sides are there so here it is uh, mahatma gandhi he gave the idea of uh, non violence clear or not okay satyagraha clear okay but the same time uh, subhash chandra bose uh, he basically a radical person or a radical approach is there towards independence towards uh, independence right or not okay so two different ideas two different uh, ideas so now we are going to discuss about uh, uh, different approaches towards the word uh, uh, what you can say peace or attaining peace 
so different strategies have been used for the pursuit of maintenance of peace these have been shaped by three distinct approaches so we can divide the total approaches towards peace uh, into three into three different approaches are there the first approach of course centrally to states respect their sovereignty and treat competition among them as a fact of life its main concern is with the proper management of its competition and with the containment of possible conflict through interstate arrangements like a balance of power okay first to maintain peace what is that balance of power is necessary within the country between the different groups of people clear clear or not so already we studied in the junior classes just remember that power sharing power sharing okay for so power is not shared properly or there is no balanced power sharing between different people in the society definitely it will lead to a conflict between the people conflict between the majority and the minority clear or not so interstate arrangements like balance of power such a balance is said to be have prevailed in the 19th century when the major european countries find tuned to the struggle of power for forming alliances that uh, deterred potential aggressors and prevented the outbreak of a large scale war so within the country power sharing is necessary the same time okay in european country basically the time of the first world war or before first world war and second world war most of the european countries they created uh, alliances groups clear or not why these groups why these groups there is a simple policy is there nothing but okay my enemy's enemy is my friend it's a great philosophy political ideology right what is that okay most of the politicians political parties will use the simple technique okay it's a most valuable command or most valuable sentence in political sense what is that my enemy's enemy is my friend clear what is that my enemy said me is my friend that only okay what is that example here aishwarya and elvina is fighting <laughs> aishwarya and elvina is fighting just remember that okay so our uh, grishma is uh, not present here okay so we can take ashish ben instead of grishma okay ashish <laughs> so there is a trouble already is there between aishwarya and uh, ashish ben right and ashish ben don't know about elvina but he heard that there is a fight between elvin and uh, aishwarya clear so ashish ben will try to create a friendship with the uh, elvina why huh my enemy who is that aishwarya and her enemy who is that elvina so creating a alliance with elvina together you are able to fight against aishwarya right a great power will be there right yes or no then aishwarya will observe okay is ashish ben have any enemies Elvina have any enemies? So she find that Elvina has an enemy. Who is that? Amal ke saji. Oh, fine. And Ashish Bini also has an enemy. Who is that? Amal Raj. So Elvina made an alliance with, uh, or my friendship with uh, Amal Raj and Amal ke saji. Now a greater alliance against uh, these two people, right? So this is what the technique they used by European countries. Okay. So Germany. Okay, Germany. They created that country. Created a. trouble attention in europe okay so number of countries they considering uh, germany as a or you can say an enemy they united they united right against germany the same time germany also thought about uh, uh, same countries with the same ideology uh almost like germany okay the countries those who are uh, using the same ideology almost like germany and they find out two countries what is that uh, the fascist italy and the monarchy uh, japan okay japan that was under the control of uh, hirohito a monarch okay emperor of uh, japan okay so these three countries align i mean join together very powerful cooperation right or not so these three countries are able to fight against almost all the countries in the world clear that's what the second world war right these three powerful giant uh, countries very powerful countries like uh, germany italy and uh, japan they fought against uh, almost all the countries in the world <laughs> like uh, what we can say uh, brazil i mean uh, britain uh, france poland russia america right another group clear so this is what alliances so why these alliances if you are uh, able to 
strengthen your side you are able to solve the problem of aggression clear or not so i should have come to know that any time these two people will attack right so he made an a greater line so elvin and ashwin will think that side is somewhat powerful want to attack now or not will think or not definitely will think okay they then will step back they will step back right and they will think about some other people those who are keeping rivalry with amal raj or amal kesaji to create a friendship with them okay so this is what the simple philosophy in a political sense what is that my enemy's enemy is my friend my enemy's enemy is my friend so it's called to be common enemy right common enemy clear so let it so this is what uh, most of the countries <coughs> use the technique to avoid um, the trouble okay or a large scale wars or is what will happen there individual means what uh, every time they will fight every time almost if there is a chance maybe a fight will be there okay so that's it so that's what the first approach the second approach is to grant the deep rooted nature of interstate rivalry but it stresses the positive presence of uh, possibilities of interdependence it underscores the growing social and economic cooperation among nations so countries are keeping rivalry between them but we know that no countries are uh, blessed with uh, all the resources right so cooperation is necessary trade cooperation so cooperation related with economic affairs are important such cooperation in expect the temper state sovereignty and promote international understanding so such kind of co cooperations such kind of needs will regulate the problem solve the problems so it's basically termed as international understanding so india will not create a problem or a, a trouble to middle east countries why we don't like to do that what is the reason behind that Huh? We are not going to attack the Arabian countries. We are not ready to do that. Why it is so? Because we are purchasing petroleum products from that country, right? The second largest importer of petroleum products. It is our country, India. If you are creating a problem with those countries, what will happen there? Next day onwards, there is no petrol and diesel. Okay, so trouble. So we will not do that. Understand? that's it the simple idea okay consequently global conflict would be reduced as a result of this uh, international understanding global conflict uh, that will be reduced uh, leading to the better prospects of peace an example frequently cited as by advocates of this approach is the post world war second europe which secured durable peace by guaranteeing sorry gra graduating from economic integration to political unification so after second world war almost all the european countries came to know that their economy is totally broke down totally destructed so they started uh, creating new plans and programs for uh, development okay even number of countries helped for that russia helped uh, with uh, what we can say Uh, different plans to protect or uh, help uh, this uh, european countries even america helped america also helped okay uh, for development of the european countries european countries okay so these are the first one it is uh, creating alliances to solve the problems okay to solve the problem of greater or large scale war okay next one uh, international understanding international understanding of the trade trade that also able to uh, eliminate the problem of uh, war third approach unlike the first two approaches the third considers the state system to be passing phase of human history it envisages the emergence of a supranational order and sees the fostering of a global community as the surest guarantee of peace so the third approach is what is that we all are the part of the human race okay we don't want to think about different states or different countries we are or we have the common existence so it will guarantee peace the seeds of such a community are found in uh, expanding interactions and coalitions across state boundaries that involve uh, diverse non governmental actors like multinational corporations and uh, people's movement so number of organizations are there number of people's movements are there okay they are thinking not just the development of the people in one country but the development of the people or development of peace in different countries or all around the world all around the world for example i can say that um, amnesty international right down amnesty international is international organization protecting peace or working for uh, human rights human rights 
the greenpeace movement greenpeace movements okay the blue cross association for animals okay red cross okay like that number of organizations are there basically they are functioning for the development of uh, not the single country but the entire world entire world a number of other organization under united nations organization like unesco who ilo okay international monetary fund the world bank everything is functioning for the development and a maintaining peace in almost all the countries in the world clear clear okay so that has uh, that organization their ideology is nothing but what is that uh, human race okay all the people in the world want to lead a peaceful life okay here and coalition across state boundaries that involve diverse non governmental actors like multinational corporations and the people's movement the proponents of this approach are argue that the ongoing process of globalization is further eroding the already diminished primacy of sovereignty of the state thereby creating conditions uh, conducive to the establishment of world peace today we studied that okay globalization liberalization okay these international activities or commercial activities that creating a strict connection or a thick connection between the countries okay related with the trade and commerce trade and uh, commerce as a result of this for economic development the most of the countries today they are not thinking about uh, uh, the sovereignty within the country within the country and allowing other countries to do business uh, in uh, the territory of one country also one country also so cooperation is increasing cooperation between the countries are uh, increasing clear or not so we studied that what is that in uh, doklam or uh, lay when the <clears throat> the chinese army started infiltration or uh, tried to uh, confiscate that areas what our government did what our government did any idea any idea <laughs> so you know that the government uh, they banned a number of uh, chinese mobile applications android applications right or not and the chinese government faced a lot of uh, economic issues related with that okay their profit level decrease like anything clear so india we know that it's a uh, second largest country in the world related with the population i am saying okay second largest country in the related with the or means of population so we know that there are number of mobile phone connections are there or smartphones are there in our country its number is uh, more than the adequate number of toilets you know you know that's what that's what the trouble in our country what is that we are giving importance for this kind of gadgets clear so we are purchasing that and we are using that so india is a great market for this kind of uh, mobile applications or android applications or uh, uh, apple applications right clear okay so we created such kind of a, uh, okay, a blockade to the infiltration of the chinese army so we succeeded in that they forced it to move back clear understand okay that's it that's it so just uh, international trade is nowadays using as a uh, barrier to solve the problem between i mean as a method to solve the problem between the countries or a barrier to the uh, infiltration or aggressive uh, activities of any countries okay here the united nations may be said to be said to embody elements of all the three approaches the security council so we know that uh, the <clears throat> organs of uh, united nations how many are there how many are there how many organs are there in the united nations organization stated in class six <laughs> okay maybe forgot okay let it so giving a chance for you people if it is not a class six i should it may be in class five i think it is fifth or sixth class we studied that right so organs of the united nations so a homework for you write down find out the organs of the united nations and it's a importance so united nation we know that it's uh, uh, basically formed after the second world war to establish world peace world peace right that's our united nation organization okay ne nearly 197 countries are the member country of uh, uh, this particular organization okay this particular organization clear okay so just want to understand what is that united nation is a, a organization basically is an international one uh, to secure peace in the world peace in the world so what is the homework 
Tell me, what is that Ashish Bindi? What is the homework? Ashish, can you hear me? Find out the organization of... Ah. Organ not organization, organs of, organs of UNO, UNO, United Nations Organization, right? Okay. And uh, want to find out uh, their, their importance, their importance, right? So here I'm reading here, the United Nations may be said to be empty elements of all the three approaches. What are the three approaches? What are the three approaches we learned? Tell me, first one, here you can see. What is that? Coalitions or alliances to stop external aggressions, external aggression. So countries creating alliance, okay, it is they are able to deter the potential aggressors and prevented the outbreak of a large scale war. Okay, we studied that in the time of a first world war and second world war, almost all the European countries use this technique. What is the technique? What I told you? What is the technique? No answers. Enemies, enemies, friend. Ah, enemies, enemies, my friend. So alliances, they created alliances. Right, okay. Second one, interstate rivalry can be solved today by means of international trade, international trade. Today we know that if you're thinking in economics way or way of economics, we can say that uh, no countries are blessed with uh, the entire resources, clear? We know that today, every day, we need a number of different uh, materials or resources to lead a life in the society, right? So no country is fulfilled with that, clear? So this kind of relationship between the countries are necessary. Trade relationship between the countries are necessary. This trade relations between the countries also is able to reduce the conflict between the countries, okay? So I already told you that India is not ready to create a problem for the Middle East countries. Basically, countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, we are not ready to uh, create a problem with those countries. What are the reason? Why is this so? Anyone? Come on first. They provide petroleum products. Of course, we are purchasing petroleum products from those countries, Middle East countries. Not only that, not only that, number of Indians skilled and unskilled laborers, uh, they migrated to those countries, right? Yes or no? They are working there and they're sending remittance, I mean, sending money back to our country. Remittances are there, right? So we are not ready to create a problem for uh, those countries because uh, a trade relation we are maintaining, right? So India is a country, the second largest importer of petroleum products. If you're creating a trouble to those countries where from we are purchasing these products, uh, it's a trouble, right? Again, we are unable to purchase that. They are not ready to supply it, right? So international trade relations also are able to solve the problem between the countries uh, and uh, it is uh, able to create a peace, clear, between the countries. So that is the second one. And what is the third one here? What is the third one here? International organizations, international organizations. So we know that after the Second World War, a organization <coughs> with number of countries in the world participated in that uh, or joined in that organization, basically termed as a United Nations organization. What the main motto of United Nations organization or main, why this, why this organization? To establish peace. Of course, to maintain peace or establish peace within the countries or they are not ready to push the countries into a third world war, third world war. Okay, so here I can ask one question here. One famous scientist, famous uh, scientist, uh, his name is Albert Einstein, right? Heard about him? Okay, he made a comment about the third world war. Do you know what is that? This is connected with the peace. What is that? If there is a third world war, anyone heard that? No, nobody. If it's a third world war, the human race will use only stones and sticks to fight in the fourth world war, right? So if a third world war is, means that is a deadly one, 
destructive one is able to end the entire humanity entire humanity so peace is necessary here peace is necessary for the coexistence of the humanity i mean the entire people in the world we want to live together without any problem that's what this international organizations and i told you there are number of organizations are there like uh, amnesty international it's an organization not in your textbook i told you to write it amnesty international it's an organization but not functioning in india it stopped functioning in india before three months okay clear because of various reasons uh, a trouble between the central government uh, amnesty international that organization stopped functioning in india but it is functioning in different other countries in the world clear amnesty international basically protecting the human rights human rights clear human rights we already stated that the importance of human rights right so amnesty international is an organization the green peace movement green peace movement the protecting the humanity protecting the humanity from various problem that creating by different countries okay ecological crisis environmental problems yeah that's it clear so the green peace movement green peace uh, movement next one we can say number of organization under the control of uh, united nations also uh functioning basically to establish peace in the world peace in the world what are the number of organizations are there unesco who ilo uh, international monetary fund world bank okay like that organization also functioning to regulate the problem between the countries or uh, solve the problem between the countries clear even i told that a trade relationship is necessary that time also we are able to find the trouble between the countries related with the exports and imports who will solve that issue there is an organization wto world trade organization to solve the disputes between the countries related with the trade and commerce trade and commerce clear clear so we studied the three aspects today what are they first of all <clears throat> today no at the time of the first world war or second world war countries in europe they created alliances okay to stop uh, a large scale uh, what do you can say uh, a large scale war large scale uh, war there so today also we can say that this kind of alliances are able to uh, stop the problem of a large scale war next one cooperation between the countries related with uh, trade and commerce that also able to reduce the problem of uh, war there next one international organization international organizations uh, like uno amnesty international this kind of organizations also are helpful to solve the problem between the countries uh, and establishing the world peace establishing a world peace clear clear so we studied about the, what are the structural problems that is creating uh, violences in the society can anyone tell me what are they what are the structural problems colonialism yeah colonialism racism racism patriarchy patriarchy right different uh, caste based yeah, caste discrimination based issues, fine okay very good ashriya so these are some issues uh, basically that is uh, existing in the society first of all we want to eliminate that to attain a uh, peace now related with the world peace we uh, discussed about uh, three different aspects so what what we can do to improve the world peace or solve the problem between the countries three approaches are there can anyone tell me all are welcome to speak those who know the answer you can no problem what are the three approaches making an industrial rivalry pardon make uh, the industrial rivalry making the trade between the international to reduce the rivalry between the countries okay international trade is helpful then then uh, with the help of the international organizations okay with the help of the international organizations also we are able to reduce the problem of uh, violence between the countries good then and uh, by making um, uh, alliances yeah alliances okay that always uh, able to create uh, a hindrance to uh, aggressors or the countries are uh, example we already discussed that in the case of germany right or not so germany have made a trouble in the period of the first and second world war uh, most of the countries they created alliances against uh, germany or to, to uh, protect their boundaries okay so finally that led to a great problems okay but today also we can say that this kind of alliances are able to uh, make hindrances right or not so for example i can say that at the time of 1971 there's a war between india and pakistan india and uh, pakistan right okay 
it's called with the bangladesh for the western pakistan okay so western pakistan asked the help from india to uh, declare independence declare independence so there's a war started between india and pakistan india and pakistan that time america allied with or created an alliance with pakistan and their seventh fleet our navy uh, force it is naval force of america the seventh fleet okay so that started to india to attack india to attack uh, india that time india made an alliance with russia clear made alliance with uh, russia and almost all the russian submarines and russian ships uh, made a blockade in indian ocean okay indian ocean right so america came to know that if you are attacking india it will create a problem russia will attack america so this kind of alliance is uh, made a, a problem what sorry made a solution what is that the great war is uh, reduced the seventh fleet uh, moved back to america and russia moved back to the russian uh, naval base okay and uh, india became victorious in that war also so the war between these two countries are uh, not spread as an international one because of this alliance okay if there is no alliance means it will uh, it will convert into an international affair international affair there clear that idea clear okay everyone so just to read this textbook uh, clearly and we will continue in the next session today okay everyone thank you very much we will meet in the next class okay sir thank you very much sir